Good morning again, and welcome again to this second part of the Bible study on John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Part one of the Bible study is on the other video, and this is part two of the Bible study, picking up with verse 24 of the Gospel of John chapter 20. Uh, remember, I'm doing a Bible study this week instead of a sermon because uh, we can explore a little bit more depth and go into a lot of different uh, avenues, and then perhaps you can sit with this study and this scripture, explore it on your own, and hear whatever God has to say to you, whatever message God uh, shares with you through this word opening today. So hear God's word from John chapter 20, beginning with verse 24. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. I always said Thomas gets a bum rap. I think he is forever remembered as a doubter, doubting Thomas, when he in fact probably reacted the way any of the rest of us would have reacted if we hadn't been there in the room with the first disciples. And in fact, in this story for today, Thomas becomes the first to call Jesus God, my Lord and my God. So he should be remembered as first confessor uh, instead of doubter. The first couple of verses set the tone for Thomas, uh, with Thomas saying, unless I see it for myself, you cannot convince me. He wants proof, uh, perhaps as any of the rest of us would want proof. But faith is not about proof. Faith is about believing, giving your heart when there is no proof. But note here um, an interesting thing I hadn't really noticed before, that, that uh, a week after Thomas says, I'm not going to believe you unless you can prove it, a week after that, Thomas uh, was there in that room with the disciples. If he had so much doubt, if he didn't ever want to believe, if he didn't uh, feel that there was a possibility, why was he there? Why was he with disciples? Why didn't he run back on home and go wherever he could go and do whatever he wanted to do? But no, he was there, still gathered with the community, even in his doubt, he was there. And that says a lot about the character of Thomas, but also the hope that Thomas held at that time. Doubt is not about lack of faith. Doubt is about seeking and trying to find truth, even amid chaos and fear and struggle in the world. So Thomas is a true believer. So he says, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. And what does Jesus do? Jesus gives him exactly what he asks for. Jesus makes a second trip back to that same closed door room and says, Thomas, I'm here for you, just for Thomas. And he turns to Thomas and he says, go ahead, touch, feel, whatever you need, whatever you need. Jesus is ready to give Thomas anything, to let Thomas touch and feel and see and know the truth that is right there in that room with him. And Thomas doesn't need any more. Thomas doesn't need more than that gift from Jesus. Jesus offers peace the same way Jesus had offered peace 
to the first disciples. Jesus says, peace be with you. Take whatever you need. And peace in the biblical sense of not just calmness, but wholeness. Jesus will give us everything we need in order to move forward in faith. Jesus said to Thomas, don't doubt, believe. So what was Thomas doubting in the first place? Uh, was Thomas doubting the resurrection, the power of God, perhaps, the love of Jesus? Probably not. Was Thomas doubting his friends, the truth of his friends, their witness to the resurrection. He hadn't experienced it, so he was doubting that they were sane or that it was real. Was Do Thomas doubting himself? I think that's most likely. Thomas was doubting his three years of following Jesus, doubting his next three years, what would he do, doubting his own commitment, doubting whether he could follow through in the face of the suffering that Jesus had experienced, doubting his own ability to move forward. Thomas' life was shattered. He was filled with doubt, perhaps more doubt of himself than doubt of any, anything else. So he acted as many people do when they're afraid. He acted with confidence and bluster and stubbornness and I will not believe. But Jesus saw through that bluster and came to Thomas, made a second trip back just for Thomas. Jesus wanted to give Thomas exactly what he needed. He wanted to give Thomas wholeness again. Do not doubt only believe. Jesus allows Thomas to be the first one to confess faith in Jesus as divine, the first to recognize and share with the world the word of God made flesh, the first to recognize Jesus as God, my Lord and my God. Jesus allowed the best of Thomas to emerge in that situation, as I believe Jesus does for all of us, allowing the best of us to come out when we receive the peace that Christ can give, when we open ourselves to that gift of God's grace and, and accept and move forward, filled with the Holy Spirit. Believe my Lord, and my God. The last three verses of this scripture passage uh, are for those of us who have not seen and yet have believed. For those of us who have, uh, are blessed in so many ways to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture passage closes by saying, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in Jesus' name. In the next few weeks, we're going to explore some of those other signs, those other appearances of Jesus to other disciples along the way. Um, and in the process, we will be exploring the way Jesus has come to us and the way Jesus has touched our lives, the ways we have experienced the resurrection power of God in our lives. Um, all of these different witnesses um, come to faith in different ways. And as John says, they're written so that we may believe. We share what we have experienced in order that others may believe and believe in Jesus and have life in the name of Jesus. So next week, we'll be picking up with the Gospel of Luke, uh, the last chapter of the Gospel of Luke with uh, an appearance of Jesus to two disciples along a road to Emmaus and how their eyes were opened in the breaking of bread how they recognized their Lord Jesus Christ with them.
In the week ahead, may you look for those signs of Jesus' presence, and may you recognize God with you, and may you be blessed. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen.